Hello, I'm Josiah Ray, and I'm going to teach you how to draw a bullseye using Java. Now, the first challenge that you hit when you're trying to draw a bullseye is a bullseye is made up of concentric circles, or circles that get progressively smaller as they move in, but who share the same midpoint. And that's a problem with Java because of the way that Java draws circles. So I'm going to show you in paint real quick kind of how Java thinks about circles when it's drawing it. So this is a coordinate system here and with the x and y coordinates. And how Java begins is when you specify a center point, it doesn't begin in the center of the circle and draw outward. It begins here. So if you specified 0, 0, and this is our coordinates, it's actually going to draw the circle like this. And so if we were to draw a big circle, and then say draw a smaller circle, you can kind of see the problem that you would you would be facing. That looks like a, a space tunnel and nothing at all like a bullseye. So to solve that problem, what we're going to do is we're going to take that midpoint wherever we want to draw the start of the circle and we're going to subtract half of the width and half the height from that starting point. So instead of drawing starting here, we're actually going to start up here and we're going to draw down so that the center of the circle ends up where we wanted it instead of too far down into the right. All right, here I am inside of NetBeans, and this is the preferred IDE or Integrated Developing Environment for Java that Oracle recommends. And here we have a simple form with basically just a slider and a panel on it. And I'm going to use the slider to tell Java how big I want the bullseye to be. So I'm going to give that just a quick run so you can see what the final result's going to look like. So here it is, it looks pretty plain, but as we begin to move the slider you can see that we have a bullseye centered in the middle of our panel with smaller and smaller circles all sharing a common midpoint. And we can even make this thing bigger and smaller and the circles get bigger and smaller in relation to each other but still share the same middle point. So, let's take a look at the code that makes that possible. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new um, instance of a bullseye class. And over here I've created this custom class that basically is responsible for drawing the bullseye. And all I'm going to do is hand it the size of the outside ring and have it draw the rest of the bullseye. And this is a more efficient way of doing things. It makes your code smaller and cleaner and uh, helps things stay a little more tidy. But back to the main form. I'm going to set up also a flag that tells me whether or not I've, I've set up the initial bullseye size. And you'll see why in just a second. All right, down under here with the slider state change. So somebody started moving the slider and we want to start drawing now. The first thing we do is we define a graphics variable and set it to the panel graphics so that we can draw inside our panel. And we're going to set the, set the color of the graphics to the color of the panel background. And the reason for this is as you begin to make that bullseye bigger and smaller, you need to erase previous uh, bullseyes that you've drawn or it's going to look like a mess. And so all I do is draw a rectangle, which is the size, the width and the height of the panel that's the same color as its background was, just kind of blank it out, make it a clean slate again. Then we come down to this if statement. And if I've already set up the bullseye, I don't want to set it up again and have to re-execute code multiple times. It slows your program down. So instead, I'm just going to hand it the size of the slider value, um, however big we want that outside circle to be. If I haven't set up the bullseye for the first time, what I want to do is hand it whatever the slider value is, so whatever they have started moving the slider value to, and then I'm going to give it the height and width of the panel that it's working with, as well as um, give it access to the panel's graphic variable. And the reason for that is so that it knows sort of the bounds it's got to work within, and we're going to some of the stuff that we do is going to be based on percentages of the size of the panel. And from inside of a class, it has no idea how big the panel is that called it. And so it's important to hand it those values. But if we have initialized it, we're just going to hand it the new value from the slider and then tell it to paint itself. And I have a, a method inside of, the, inside of the class that paints the bullseye. 
So let's take a quick look at our, at our custom class here. So here we are inside our class bullseye. And I've defined several variables here, the size, the width, the height, and the center x and y. Now the size obviously is however big we want that outside ring to be, but it'll also end up defining how big each of the rings are as they get smaller. The width and height are simply the width and height of the panel, and the center, x and y, are going to not be the center of the panel, they're going to be what we're using as the center of each ring as it gets smaller. So, we're going to bring in, originally, um, these variables S, W, H, and GFX for graphics, and set the width and the height, Vari variables that we've defined inside this class to W and H respectively, and then activate the change size method, which we'll take a look at in just a second, and set our G to the graphics variable. So now we have access to the graphics of the panel. Coming down to change size this is a very, very simple function. All it's going to do is tell this class how big the circle is we're trying to draw right now and where its middle needs to be for it to be centered where we need it. So this will be activated several times as those circles start to get smaller just so that we can move the middle point or move the starting point where we're drawing from like I showed you so that the middle point always ends up being the same. And very simply it's going to take in an input x, set the size of whatever we're trying to draw to that, and then take the center x and set it to the whole size of the panel divided by 2, so right in the middle, and then it's going to back it up half the size of the circle. So when the circle ends up getting drawn, it happens to land right in the middle where we want it. And it's going to do exactly the same thing with the height. So up and down, it's also exactly centered. So not too complicated, not too complicated yet. And here we go. This is the, this is the painter method. And it looks kind of scary at first, but I'm going to show you something to kind of put your mind at ease. You'll notice that every time that we draw one of the circles, we draw twice. And that's simply because the line that it draws is very, very thin. And so to thicken that line up a little bit, I'm drawing one line, and I'm drawing, or one circle. I'm drawing one circle just a tiny, tiny bit smaller than it to kind of thicken those lines up a little bit and you can see it clearer. So the very first thing that we do is we draw, the, draw an oval with the center X and Y, which is the center of the form that we gave it. If we go back to, to here, Initially, we hand it the width and height of the form, and coming back into here, we give it the width and height. So the center x and y gets set when we, change, when we activate this, and this is right as the class is being set up. I know it's a little bit confusing to follow, but right as the class is getting set up, we already set the center x and y, so when we activate paint, at that point, the class has already figured out where the center needs to be. So it's going to grab its center, and then the size, x and y, are going to be the same, because we want it to be perfectly round. We don't want it to be an oval. And so we can just use the size twice, kind of save a little bit of space on variables there. Then we change the size and draw a new, a new circle with the color blue. Then we change the size and draw a new circle with the color green. And we change the size one last time, and instead of drawing just a circle, we're going to fill the circle for that solid bullseye center. And we're going to color that red. So you can change the size to whatever intervals you wanted. Uh, the basic meaning of these codes are I went down by a quarter, and then another quarter, and then another quarter. So the first circle is fully big, then the next one's at three quarters, then at half, and then at one quarter. Or at one third, actually, in this case. One quarter was a little bit small. So experiment with the variables, but you'll notice that all of these are divisions of that original size variable. So no matter how big you make your bullseye or how small you make it, all of these other circles that are drawn inside of it are going to be proportionally identical. So it's going to look like the same bullseye no matter how big it is. And because it's set up this way and it's so efficiently set up this way, you can now program user input that changes and maneuver and manipulate the size of that dynamically in real time and end up with this same size bullseye every time. So I'll take one quick look at that one more time. 
here we go, we're going to move the slider, and there we are. We've got that bullseye getting bigger and smaller. And constantly, you can see a little flicker as it, as it kind of clears out the background and redraws the bullseye. And you can tell that the bullseye rings are not only centered, but they're proportionally the same no matter how big or small the bullseye is. Well, my name is Josiah Ray, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on how to create a bullseye using Java. Thank you.